Welcome back everyone, I am the Depressed and this is Lime with Potato 2. Uh, so you might notice my stats are a bit different. Um, there was actually some footage um, of me attempting the Dragon God uh, with lower stats. Um, like, you know, soon after our finishing of the Infinity Corridor. Um, but I lost that footage, uh, which means I also lost the dialogue that w that was involved. So this is just me getting going through and uh, doing that. And then there'll be a cut to uh, where I actually attempt it uh, again with, uh, well, explaining the situation. So, I'm just going to do the dialogue and then there'll be a jump cut. So you've come, maidens. Hehe, <laughs> we're here. Glad to see us? Hey, we have a guy here too, look. No, I'm not here. I want to go home. You disappeared last time saying we were weak. But you're ready to f face us at, our, at full strength now, right? The Yame no, no Mur Murakumo told you this. Of course. Good. Then you must be resolved for what's about to come. Same to you. Are you ready to scream like a little girl after losing to a bunch of mere maidens? What would that even sound like? Defeating Ame no Murakumo and Yamata no Orochi has made you conceited. The name Dragon God is not just for show. Come at me with all you have. I will not go down easily. Alright, so I did do some research, I did some experimenting, I even tried again, uh, but I did even worse, I, I scrapped that footage. But, um, so the way the first phase works, um, there are certain damage thresholds where it will transform, and then certain da damage thre thresholds where it will untransform. And when it transforms, it will transform into one of the two colors, either red or I guess blue, whatever the other color is. Um, every action it takes while in said colors, they will give a stackable permanent buff. Uh, for red, it's attack, I believe, and then for blue, it is speed. Um, the transformations, uh, both in and out, do not take his turn. Uh, so that's kind of what ended up happening. Um, we kind of we kind of dodged some bullets on our first try, where I pumped out enough damage where I skipped the first red phase and went straight and then. And, and managed to stop on a re in a neutral phase, um, but then I kind of hit I, then I hit the blue phase, and then I started suffering some pain. Um, as noted, there are multiple phases of this fight. The second phase involves two of them, uh, each of them kind of being their own little, essentially one of them being red and the other one being blue, and kind of doing similar mechanics. Uh, supposedly, that phase gets much easier once you kill one of them, and then after you kill both of them, there's a third phase which we didn't reach. Um, the advice in the wiki is not particularly helpful. Um, in fact, on the the, the the floor page itself, it has very little information, uh, and some of it's not correct, and some of it's based off phases as far as like resistances and stats are concerned. Um, pretty much the advice, well, so I guess to talk specifically, the red phase, what it'll do immediately is it will do uh, a single target attack that does extremely high physical damage. Um, Renko, I think, has about 500 physical um, affinity, and she still takes about 7 million damage from it. And it hits twice. Um, the ways to avoid that particular attack, um, pretty much the advice in the wiki was just use Tenchi, which I'm not going to do. I'm not going to start a new. Uh, I'm not going to start up another character. Um, some of the these weren't mentioned, but these are obvious things that can also help. Is having a character that can reliably self res. Uh, Moko, I think Kamachi, I believe, are some of them. The only character I have in my party right now that can self res is Mei Ling, and Guts is not remotely reliable. Um, if it were to trigger on the first hit, it certainly would not trigger on the second. Um, the other option uh, is essentially just blitz through it and try to cycle through the phases before he could take actions, which is what we kind of did. Problem is, is if you hit too hard, you can end up in a situation where it hits its turn, it goes red phase, goes neutral, and then immediately goes to blue phase. And it can do that all that before even taking an action. Um, in which case, then you're just going to get hit by blue phase, which may kill multiple people as well. Speaking of blue phase, blue phase does kind of like a line AoE, it looks like, and it does it twice. I didn't really pay too much attention to that one, because at least that one I could somewhat survive. But essentially, the gist is, I 
the final boss feels like it's just a big giant stat stick. Like it doesn't seem like it has anything that stands out as far as like it doesn't seem. It, I, I didn't notice any debuffs. Didn't notice it. It has a stackable buff, but beyond that, I didn't notice any other buff buffs it did. It just hits really, really hard. It has extremely high stats. So, since I had some achievements I needed to take care of, I have now won 10,000 battles. I think around the time we attempted the fight, I think I had around 8,000. Uh, amongst these, I did do six more fights of winner um, to get so I can make more winner's racks, um, which I did equip to Nittery, uh, which I'll talk about Nittery in a bit. And then, obviously, through my grinding, I did get my 20,000 battle points. So, uh, Destroyer, win 10,000 battles, get a Spartan Tome attack. Uh, Reimu, the Destroyer of Worlds, what has uh, what has she seen through her great tree travels? And then, Centurion, get 20,000 battle points on a character. Uh, your feats of Valor have awarded you this proof of your strength, Fighting Jewel. Alright, so the only things I'm missing now is the main equipments. Uh, I'm missing a main equipment and a sub-equipment, and there's of course defeating the final final boss. Um, I'm not going to worry about the missing equipment, I don't really know which ones I'm missing and I don't really care. <laughs> uh, needless to say, when I, when I looked up the stuff for the, this boss, I was almost tempted to quit, but since I've gone this far and grinding's actually pretty quick, I'm just going to brute force this. So as you can see, my stats are much higher now. So the goal here, um, I did do some tests uh, off screen, like I mentioned before, about how hard he hits. Um, so I got Renko's HP. The main things I focused on was HP and speed. Um, I did get a few people's attack stats or magic stats a little bit higher, but for the most part, all the money I had, I devoted towards HP and speed, uh, just to kind of make sure I can try to survive. Um, the idea is, I want to be able to, I want Nidori to be able to survive in neutral phase. Neutral phase is when it spams that breath attack that hits everybody. Um, I need to essentially just have my all-star team be in the front line and just endure it and pump as much damage as quickly as possible. I think that's going to be the plan. Um, so yeah, I went ahead and swapped out the Quartz Charms uh, for Winner's Rags. Um, I know there's been comments about how wonderful or amazing the Quartz Charms it is, and I'm assuming it's because of the plus percent damage, which becomes 40% per item. Swapping them out, my damage was practically the same, which does mean that the Quartz Charm was in fact doing something. Uh, but the trade-off of using the Quartz Charm was all I got was some uh, physical damage, or not physical, uh, damage reduction, which has a cap and doesn't save Nidori in the first place, and a whole lot of death resistance, which you don't need the amount of death resistance I was getting from those things. Um, Winner's Rex, I was pretty much doing the same amount of damage, but now I have more defense, more speed in, more HP, more evasion, and just more status resistance overall. So overall, it just seemed to be an improvement. Um, she's now the fastest character in the group, and yeah, good times. Uh, besides that, I don't think any other gear was changed around. I did do some experimenting uh, with Quartz Charms on Renko, but apparently the stat loss just did not... As far as I, not uh, I noticed, it didn't actually improve my resistance to the particular attack I was trying to resist. As you can see, she has 456 physical affinity, so she it, it, it is not going to get much much higher without me sacrificing a bunch of stats. Anyway, uh, besides that, I don't think there's anything as far as gear is concerned. Um, I did max out some skills um, that were not maxed out at the time. Um, I've leveled up a, sh a ton. Obviously, I've fought like over a thousand battles, so I definitely leveled up a bunch. Um, but yeah, I don't mind just brute forcing this because this boss is just brute force and incarnate. So, I'm going to do something like this. Um, I think my plan will be to swap in Vermilia. Um, once Mailing has her action, because I don't really need her. Um, as uh, I did do all my grinding in the basement 11 floor, and so I was getting a bunch of jewels. So majority of the group has maxed out everything, almost. So as far as the jewels are concerned, uh, so that'll help a little bit. But uh, yeah, the idea, uh, also uh, stat-wise, um, HP speed, Renko. HP speed for Mei Ling, HP speed for, or, uh, for Maribel, she also has m magic. Uh, Nidori, HP speed and attack. Uh, Miko, I got to 4000 magic and then I kind of caught, caught her up on some of her defenses. Uh, Raisin, uh, speed, HP, uh, not as much magic though. Uh, Sakya didn't really do much with her to be honest. Uh, she did help out a lot with the sweeping. Uh, 
for grinding, because she can kill everything with misdirection at this point. Uh, Sine, not much uh, to talk about. Mamazo, I did uh, update her HP and speed a little bit. I don't. Unfortunately, she's just not a character I use that much anymore. And then for Remilia, HP, speed, and attack. Oh, I did swap in this Dark Sword of Chaos on Remilia. Um, oh yeah, Nidori. Yeah, Nidori is no longer using the Dark Sword of Chaos. She is now just using the Will of Gensokyo. And Remilia is now using the Dark Sword of Chaos, which gave her a ton of attack power. Alright, so with all that said and done, let's go ahead and just try this again and see how it goes. I haven't tested this out yet, so I don't know how well it will perform. Hopefully it does slightly better. I do... I have leveled up quite a bit. Alright, I'm just holding down the button so it'll cycle through the text faster. This actually worked out pretty well. Upping Rinko's speed made it so she can get charge off before Mari had a turn, which means now I can just heal. And then I'm gonna tag you out for. Uh, actually, I'll tag I'll tag you out for racing and see if she can survive it. So yeah, uh, when I took all those actions, the Dragon God was at around 9,000 on the ATB, and yet still Nedry was able to outspeed it. Um, that's how ridiculous this gets. Uh, I am still going to wait. Let's go ahead and just keep popping. Grand Patriot Elixir. Yeah, as you can see, it still hits for a lot, but now I can at least tank it. So my plan here is just to stack... Uh, the other thing you can also do is, of course, debuffs do work on this boss, so you can try to debuff to try to mitigate the damage as much as possible. Oh, shock actually worked. Holy cow, that's amazing. Yeah, my speed. The, the key thing here was just to outspeed it so I can just speed through all this and not have to worry about it. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and heal. That was not a heal. I just misclicked there. Okay, well, I need to tag in someone else before Nettery dies. Okay, it's gonna get this attack off. Alright, uh, Ranko didn't survive. So I have to kill it now. It did get six attack here, so. Okay, I can get Super Scope off. Okay, survived. Good. Okay. Okay. So now we have to kill both of these. Luckily we could do pretty good damage. Oh wow, really good damage. Alright, this time actually heal everybody. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, if I didn't have to, like, if I hadn't had needed to stall there, I think I would have been okay. Okay, one down. I don't know what element this one. I think it's nature. I think it's like something dumb as far as the uh, resistance are, are concerned. One way to find out, I guess. We can just use you. Yeah, we can get uh, nature. Cube shock. All right, final phase. True god form thingy. All right, resistance, a spirit, regular against that. Resistance to dark. Go ahead and heal again. Weak against water, or weak against nature. I don't know what attack's coming, and I don't know if I can take it. Okay, and it's already taking another action. I'm gonna attack in Romelia just in case. Okay, I think that was probably a good call. <laughs> Luckily, I have it debuffed. Um, he does have all stats plus 24% right now. But just keep the debuffs coming. We're done. We, we won. We beat the Dragon God. Haha, <laughs> you're kidding me. We won, but I lost. What? That's it? Boring. Never thought I'd be able to see the famed Dragon God. The legendary wanderer of the universe spilled bitter tears of defeat. Wahahaha. <laughs> Your personalities leave much to be desired. My. You didn't know already. So, you won. What are you going to do now? What do you mean? You may ask, but nothing will change. Just as before, I'll subtly uh, interfere in or, or stay out of this world's happenings. Would you prefer to overthrow my position instead? No, we weren't thinking that at all. Well then, nothing will change. Were you hoping for, uh, for the title of Dragon God or some kind of eternal reverence? Either is fine for, with me. Now then, I must go. Ah. One more thing. Well, what? Eek. Huh? <laughs> now. Farewell. I enjoyed this. He's really gone. Hmm. Title. Reverence. It might be something like that, after all. What are you going on about? Nothing in particular. Let's go. We're done here. You're weird. Heh. <laughs> and just like that. Time to get our title. Dragon God's Power Source. Achievement for defeating Dragon God Full Power. You receive the sub-equipment Dragon God's Power Source as your reward. Didn't hold back this time. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm missing two items, which I don't know what they are. 
Dragon God's power source, the origin of the power of the true god who travels through many worlds and created Gensokia as we know it today. Well, a fragment of the power anyway, it's still ridiculously strong, so to equip it with gratitude. All stats 600%, all affinities 100, and all resistance is 50. So yeah, I'm not sure what I'm missing. We have, we have these two, I know that much. We have the FGs. Yeah, as far as I can tell, I'm not missing any crafted items at least, so it's a, it's probably a drop, but I don't know where it would drop. Oh well. In any case, uh, we'll go ahead and make a save here, because we have one more thing to do. You can feel the power of Dragon God. Perhaps defeating him at his full power will open up the passage. Indeed, it did. I'm surprised you guys were even willing to fight us right now. Alright, we got this point. As the pillar of light is touched, a fierce aura can be felt all around. Something fearsome may have happened. Enhanced versions of bosses may now be challenged. Enhanced bosses, uh, 429 bosses, Hollow, Yamata no Orochi, Epiphany, Ame no Murakumo, and Full Power Dragon God. Maximum uh, for consecutive battle bonuses have been increased uh, to 250% within the Great Tree and 1,000% within the Infinity Corridor. By defeating the enhanced version of the, these bosses, they are their drops may be traded for via 7-star remnants. Defeat these bosses to power up your team's gear. Needless to say, this is if you just want to keep on going. And this is probably around the stage where you probably want to start using Quartz Charms or whatever. But, uh, for us, we're done. <laughs> we're not going to go any further. I've pretty much done everything. Um, the only achievements I'm missing, as mentioned before, is some sub-equipment and main equipment. I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, just wondering where the... Yeah, I'm not going to even bother checking. I don't know where you would use the 7 star remnants, and I'm not going to bother trying to get them. And I don't think there's anything here either. Okay. So, yeah. That's uh, that's it. Labyrinth of Toho 2, plus disc. All of the post-game content, for the most part, is completed. Um... So compared to the last time I played this game, and I guess comparing it to also the the first game, um, the uh, the quality of life improvements were were nice. Being able to see like it, whether or not your element is actually going to be effective or not, uh, just by you know clicking on it and then you know seeing if it's weak, strong or weak against them, is very nice. Um, unfortunately, they, that was as far as they went. Um, and kind of my biggest complaint about the game is just the lack of information. Um, you don't really get information about monsters until after you defeat them, which is useless against most bosses. Um, there's a lot of mechanics that are just not conveyed very well. Um, it's nice to be able to see kind of what buffs and debuffs they have, but some of them may be like certain effects uh, that don't actually give you that much information. There's also the whole aspect about like, you know, bosses, you know, switching phases and things like that. And it's, it kind of has that do it again stupid type feel to it. Um, that being said, uh, there is a lot of customization you can do here. You can have a, di um, especially if you're doing New Game Plus, where you get to use all the characters, including plus disc characters. Um, you can just make all sorts of teams that are fun to do. Um, I particularly like doing the Scarlet Devil team, where you use nothing but Scarlet Devil Mansion characters. It can be really fun. Um, and obviously, there's 
a lot of things you can do with the subclasses to kind of make characters go outside their niche or further reinforce the niche that they're already in. Um, the uh, the extra stuff that you get through the Jewels of Awakening uh, was interesting. Um, it did kind of feel a bit lacking in most cases because a lot of them are just kind of passives. But for certain characters, it was kind of a nice improvement. Uh, Romelia having an AoE finally was really nice. It also helped her out in the grinding. Um, this is an issue not particularly with this game, but a lot of games that tend to go with really ridiculously high numbers for stats and stuff. Like, as you can see, I'm level 3,000, and, and I'm in the millions for my HP and stuff, and some of my attacks and defenses are in, like, you know, the eight digits. Um, it the, the gameplay is so fast, and the numbers come so quickly and fade and disappear so quickly that it's the, the numbers have gotten so high that I actually can't tell a lot of times how much damage I'm actually doing. Um, I'm... I usually barely have enough time to even count how many digits there are. Um, and this kind of, kind of ends up being a, being a situation where the, the post game, it particularly shows itself in the post game content. Like obviously you can out level anything in this game. Um, generally I tried to stay within the level as um, while I was going through the, the story mode, but for the post game content, there wasn't really any love. All the levels were listed as question marks. And even though they had a level listed when you fought them, um, their stats and abilities were so ridiculous that you are almost better off just out outstatting them and just beating them that way. Um, and the numbers just got so huge that it just like, okay, um, you know, I made this team here, and then you know, I come against Dragon God who just hits for ten million, just bought out ten million damage. It's like, okay, well, I don't have very many options, so I just make my number go bigger. Um, obviously, if I was less stubborn about my team and actually switching to other characters, obviously that would be less of an issue. Um, for this playthrough, as I mentioned a long time ago, I was trying to play characters I never played before in the previous game or previous run. Um, so that did kind of go to my detriment. Um, as for the characters I did pick, um, Mari and Rinko are amazing. Uh, Nittery, of course, is just already known to be one of the S tier characters in this in this game. Uh, in fact, the plus disc um, expansion actually nerfed her because she was that ridiculous, and even then, it still didn't do much to her. Um, some of the other characters. Uh, obviously, Mailing's solid. She's always been solid in the in these in both games. Uh, Miko's really good. She's kind of limited on her element options, um, which got a little bit better once you get get her um, her Jewel of Awakening active, because uh, then at least she can either do Dark or Spirit. But even then, she's pretty pretty one note. That being said, she's very durable, and any character that has maintenance type abilities is generally pretty broken. Uh, Racing's great. I always like using Discorder or Discarder, or whatever it's called, the one that does all the debuffs. It's a lot of fun. Sakia kind of fell off, but she, um, on screen, you didn't really see her very much. Off screen, I generally used her for a lot of uh, grinding and sweeping, uh, which definitely made things uh, go a lot faster as far as grinding is concerned. I always like playing Vermilia, even though she's just, you know, usually buff up and hit things with Spear. Um, her getting an AoE did kind of expand that a bit further. Um, she's very good for sweeping. Even on the 411 where everything's resistant to dark, I still was sweeping and she every time she killed something she got MP back. So she was able to just kind of almost sweep forever. Um, Mamiso kind of has an interesting kit, um, but it just kind of... Um, the the whole elements, random, random element stuff really hurts her. Um, even without the elements, though, she does have good spell cards that you can play around with. It's just I didn't really have much interest beyond the whole element thing. Also, it's the, it's the same issue I mentioned before where the, there's a lack of information. All it tells you is what element it has, but it doesn't tell you what the element actually does to certain spell cards. And the only way you would actually know is by guessing and checking and writing it down or going to the wiki. Um, at one point, I did have some notes for like what what element does what, but I just didn't bother. Uh, Sine was kind of nice. The, the thing that hurts her is the fact that everything she does is single target, including her buffs. Um, also, I did forget one other option you have as far as surviving that particular attack that I mentioned before with the, the red phase. You could also survive it with Eren, uh, using her overheal ability, in which case you can just make your HP go so ridiculously high that you'll just survive it anyway. Um, yeah, some of these characters I, I kind of wish I had from the previous game, uh, run of this game, where I had like Eren, where I can overheal and all that good stuff. But like I said, overall, it's been it was a fun game. Uh, definitely, I definitely felt the slog uh, for the post game content for Plus Disc. Uh, the story mode for Plus Disc, I think, was fine. Uh, I had pretty much not much care for the Infinity Corridor, though I did it. Uh, I mentioned in a previous video, the shop there is kind of useless. 
uh, because there's just no way you can grind out that much uh, much materials, at least not viably, viably. And by the time you're at the point where you are probably grinding that through the endless, you know, 640 and beyond uh, floors, uh, you're at, already at the point where you're strong enough to handle anything anyway. You'll probably already have a full collection of Shogun statues like I do. Um, so yeah, but post-game content for Plus Disc is just... It's just a lot of just it, the numbers got so ridiculous that you're. I just didn't want to think about it. Uh, some of the plus disc characters are interesting. I didn't really get to explore them because, like I said, that lack of information in the game itself is just it makes it kind of hard to keep track of things. And I didn't really want to juggle things like Futo's plates or Tokiko's weird newspaper stuff. Um, it just I didn't really have the time to kind of deal deal with that stuff. And it's also you're at the, by the time you get those characters. You don't really want to swap out your team. <laughs> That's kind of how I felt. I did manage to swap in like Miko and Mamazo at the very least, but yeah, for the most part, I was just like, I don't really want to put in the work to try to learn this character at this point in the game. Um, now, for New Game Plus, of course, you can probably try them out and then kind of have a more gradual time to actually explore their mechanics. But that's pretty much it. Um, I'm finally done with this game, and I don't think I'll be playing it anytime soon. Um, it's still a good game. It definitely has replay, about, re replay value with the uh, the Plus Disc. Um, if you do do the post-game content for Plus Disc, I'd recommend only doing it once. <laughs> doing it more than once is probably not good for your health. Um, as for what I'll be doing from here, um, I got some ideas. I'll probably be splitting between two games again, though this time it, both of them won't be slogs, so hopefully it won't be too bad for me. Um, I got some board games in mind, and I have probably a few more shorter games to hopefully uh, be a nice little, nice little palate cleanser. But like I said, for a Toho game, uh, this is real, this is pretty good. Um, I hopefully they'll make a third one and hopefully uh, improve further beyond that. Um, so until then, I am the Depressed Dior. This is Labyrinth of Toho 2. I'll see you guys later.